This is about six lines, six lines in the bottom, the bottom of the page, last word, last word on the line. Beheshev Sixel is Asher Gozel. You're obligated to return the stolen item. Ma Talmud Lamer, what's teaching us? Asher Gozel Yachser, Asher Gozel Yachser, and Asher Gozel. The first thing we know is you have to return it as it was stolen, meaning if in the same condition. The Khan Amru, from here we see, Hagozel Michael is born of Turim Milashalom. If somebody uh, somebody stole and gave it to his kids and they consumed it, so he's so the kids are exempt from paying because they they won't be able to return the item as, as it was stolen. How about he niachlef them? He left it as an inheritance. Both children and adults are are obligated to return it. The name of Simchas they said gedolim chayoven ketanim peturin. That adults are obligated to return it. Children are exempt from that obligation. Okay, so now, now we have an interesting story. Baruch Hamur de Rabbi Yirmiya. Okay, this is the son of Rabbi Yirmiya's father-in-law. In English, they typically call this a brother-in-law. So, Torah Goli Ba'apa de Rabbi Yirmiya. So when the father-in-law died, he went ahead and he locked the doors so Rabbi Yirmiya would not be able to enter the house and take anything. Also, come here, Rabbi So Rabbi Yirmiya went to Rabbi He said, "What should you do?" Amr, he said, "Shalayu teve." Shalayu teve. One second. So Rabbi says that he's entitled to the house because he, he's a son; he's inheriting it. And obviously, you are only a, only your son-in-law. One second. So uh, Rabbi Yirmiya says, I'm going to bring witnesses that will testify that the house belongs to me and that the father gave it to me while he was still alive. So Amr Lai, so, um, so Rabbi often says to him, Accept witnesses that when it's not in front of the um, of the defendant. And over here, because the defendant is a child, you can't even bring your witnesses. So your Yirmiya is claiming the house is already his, and you're often saying, well, fine, but who are you bring to court? A kid? You can't bring a kid to court. And moreover, the, the, the witnesses always, always need to be test, testify in front of the defendant. Because the defendant is a child, so therefore, uh, therefore, you can't... Um, the, the testimony can't be given in front of him because he's not considered to be to be there, to be present because he's a child. So the Gemara says, So he, had, he asked him a question from our Mishnah. The Mishnah says, the, the Bryce we just saw, it, actually, the Bryce says that if the stolen item is around, the children have to return the item. It's a technical problem, though. How do you bring children to court? How do you testify that it was it belonged to the thief if you need to testify in front of the defendant and the children the children don't qualify as as defendants, children uh, that is minors. Mm -hmm. So Amr so Amr so, so he said, "Well, it's a debate, and Simchas apparently holds like me." Okay, so so in other words, Rabbi Yirmiya is saying that he could bring the kids to court. And Rabbi Ovid is saying, well, that's true, you have the Brisa, according to the rabbi's opinion, but Simchas disagrees with you. And according to Simchas, you can't bring the minors to court. Presumably, that's why, according to Simchas, the kids are exempt from returning the stolen item. So Rabbi Yirmiya says back to him, he says, Omar Lay. Um, he says, so since when did everyone adopt Simchus' opinion? Simchus is a minority opinion. We don't follow that opinion. Clearly, the majority opinion says that the item, the, the, we do testify in front of defendants, and we should return the item, and therefore, I am entitled to bring my witnesses to testify that the property belongs to me and not that kid's. Adahachi, while they were busy, Gagal Milsa. 
the issue the issue the issue kept on going kept on on, on uh, going on, and uh, more people heard about it. Also, Umot lekamei bavu eventually got to bavu's desk. Amr le Amr he says le Shmuel who had Rav Yosef Archama Amr Vaisha. Have you not heard of the statement of Rav Yosef Archama in the name of Rav Vaisha? Amr Rav Yosef Archama Amr Vaisha. Tinek shetokaf ba'avodav v'yor l'tachsodah shel chaveroi v'amr shalihu. Yeah. So basically, a child took his father's slaves, and he went ahead and grabbed somebody else's property and says it's his. We don't say namtin achiyagel. We don't say wait till he becomes an adult and then he, and then and then you can take him off because he needs to be an adult to be an, a defendant in court. We take it away from him immediately. Well, the Kishiyagdal, when he becomes an adult, Yahweh ate him. He bring, when he becomes an adult, he can bring witnesses. It says, Venera, and we'll see what happens. Okay, so, so what he's proposing here is that. One second. In this case, Rabavu uh, is, is implying that we could bring a, bring a child defendant to court. And presumably, it should be the same story here as well. We should be able to bring uh, the Rabbi Yirmiya's brother-in-law, who was a child, to court. Uh, one second. So the Gemara says, Midami, there's no comparison. The difference there is, when the child goes to somebody else's property, he does not have the chazaka of his father. He doesn't have the presumption that this field has always been his property or his father's property. But over here in this scenario, he does have the presumption that it belongs to him because we know it belongs to his father and we know that he's the only, he's the only son. Rabbi Yermia is a son-in-law. Rabbi Yermia here is considered the one who's trying to remove things because he's claiming it was sold to him or gifted to him. Because a son-in-law does not inherit, only a son inherits. So Rabbi Yirmi, Rabbi Yirmi is the one who's trying to, to change the status quo. This, the status quo here favors the child. In that case, it's not, it's not, there's, there's no evidence from the story of, of uh, Rav Yasef in the name of Rav Aisha that we would that we would take it away from the kid we would, or or that we would require the kid to stand in court. Basically, the story remains unresolved, and it seems like Rabbi Yirmi did not get the field. Or he would have to wait until the kid became an adult in order to be able to get it. Okay, now we get into a long list of, of laws about, about how courts work and how judgments are issued. It's very practical. It's very, very practical. It's like an exception to Bavakama. Okay, <laughs> uh, 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 Bavakama is generally a safer of Klolem. It's, it's safer general statements. It's a book of general statements. Mm -hmm. This is pretty practical. Omer of Shavsoi, Omer of Ashi, Omer of Shavsoi. It's a very interesting name. Shavsoi, by the way, is most commonly used in Talmud to refer to Saturn. Refer to what? Saturn. Planet. Oh. Shavsoi is Saturn. Uh, page, page position, about a quarter of the way down. Which page? Uh, 112a. Okay. First word on the line is Mekablam Adam. 12b now. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, 12b. 12b, my mistake. Okay, I'm looking... Um... About a quarter of the way down. A little more than a quarter. Mm. Oh, okay, I see it. I see it. Okay. 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 Even in the absence of the defendant, so Rabbi Yechonon, Rabbi Yechonon spoke it as if it was a as if it was a crazy crazy idea. Like how is the thing possible? Toy by Rabbi Yechonon, Rabbi Yechonon was you know wondered aloud. Is such a thing permissible? Are you are you allowed to accept witnesses when the defendant can't 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 be there? To, can't be there. Can it, is it, he can't be there at all during the proceeding? We'll get to it. We'll get to it. We will get to it. Okay. 
Kibbu minei Rabbi Yosef Rabbi Chanina. So, okay, so we have we basically here have a debate. Rabbi Yechanan is implying that we do not accept the witnesses if the defendant is not present. And uh, and uh, and um, who is Rav Ashi and, and Rav Shapsai are implying that we do accept it. So Rav Yosef Rabbi Chanina understood this to mean Kibbu minei Rabbi Yosef Rabbi Chanina and Shahaya hu chayla a of chaylam. The scenario was the defendant was ill or the witnesses were ill. And he wasn't, you know, the witnesses were only able to testify in a very narrow window because of their illness, and he wasn't able to be there. <laughs> I'll show you, or the witnesses want to go on a long trip, and he couldn't make it to court on, in time. <laughs> they, they let him know that they're going to accept testimony for Lebanon, and he didn't come. Okay, so basically, does this, does this answer your question, uh, Eric? Yeah. So according to this third version, he's sort of compromising here, and he's saying that, He's saying, according to Rav Yosef, we're explaining, Rav Yosef, we're explaining that it depends on on practical practicality. He couldn't make it, you know. Then then we would accept the witness, the, the testimony, and, and, and it's an urgent need. Amar Yud Amar Shmuel, Makadim Edim Shloib B'Fenei Bal Dinner. Yud says the name of Shmuel. You can accept witnesses when the when the defendant is not present. Amar Marak, full of the Dibim Farshim Ben Edim Shmuel, he go into Pasulei Bedino. I'll explain to you the opinion of Shmuel. What happened was in the Patsula Medina, they started out and they started a court case, also, and they sent for the the uh, the other guy, the other litigant, and he did not show up. But if, however, the court case has not started, then the defendant can argue, I, I would like to go to the major court in in uh, in, in Israel. <clears throat> So Mara says, which is sort of a, an endless delaying tactic, right? Uh, we'll go to Israel for the court case. Yeah, sure you will. Yeah, sure. So Mara says, and Ami, Matsi Amrle, and Amrle, Lebes Nagodl, Zilna. Let's say they start the court case. Why can't he withdraw from the case and say, I'm going to the best Nagodl? So Amravina going to knock at this, going to be best Nagodl. If I understand this correctly, yeah. Basically, they've already gone to the, the highest court and they've gotten a letter from them that, that the local court should execute should execute their judgment. So, so they can't he doesn't have an excuse to go, go to the major court. Okay. Continue. Ne- next rule. Omarav, minutes a star, You can you can accept the the uh you can notar- this is sort of an, an old fashioned notary service. So today, the, you notary you notarize at the time that you sign the document. And the old way of doing it, you sign by comparing signatures, mm. much like the uh, art experts do today. You know, when they find forgeries and signatures. So Rob says, when you notarize the document, it has to be uh, even if the other part, the counterparty, is not present. You can still notarize a document. You cannot you cannot notarize a document until the counterparty is present. I'll explain to you the reason of Rabbi that does not allow this. The reason is this refers to the process of a shar an ox becoming becoming habituated in violence. What do you do? Who are the olive? You warn the owners. and the owner still doesn't watch it. There has to be a warning that's given to the owner of the animal, so he has an opportunity to protect it. it says Rabbi Yechon learns from there that whenever whenever you're engaging in any type of court action, both parties must be present. Amar Rava. So Rava says. The halacha is you can notarize even if the other party is not present. Even if the other guy is screaming, he doesn't want it to be notarized. Wonder why, right? The Amr Nekidli Zimna Ad Maisina Sahadi Marana Lestara. Okay, so he over here he makes a proposal. He says, he says, uh, just hang on a minute. I I have witnesses that say the document is invalid. So what do we do? Nectina light, we give him some time. If he brings fine, let's say he doesn't come by the time. We wait a Monday, a Thursday, and then a Monday again. And if he still cannot provide the proof, because 
second here. Okay, okay. So now, just uh, some summarize here for a little bit. Okay. Provide some context. Basically, what happens is a guy wants to collect the debt. Reuven has a debt uh, to to Shimon. Shimon he, he owes Shimon money. Shimon is coming to collect. So now Shimon brings the document. Of course, of course, we don't collect from the document until it's notarized. So Reuven says, "Yeah, it's a fake document. It's forged." Bring and Shimon obviously has the witnesses. And we can compare the signatures. It doesn't seem to be forged. So Ruben says, I'll bring witnesses. Okay, so we give him time. Um, he still doesn't bring it. We wait on Monday, Thursday, Monday. And now, now we we notarize the document. And now, but now there's another problem. And the problem here is that now Ruben has not paid his debt. It's time to start enforcing the collection. So how does the collection process work? Kasvina psicha iluya. The first thing we do is we, we write a bill of excommunication. Tish and Yemen for 90 days. Tilson, Tilson come away the first 30 days. We do not allow, allow him to go collect the money. Because perhaps he's borrowing, he's trying to borrow money to, to pay back the debts. Uh, the middle 30 days, you still can't collect. From his assets, the Omar Dilma Loy Eshkechamezik with Tarach Umazvin. Maybe he couldn't borrow money. Now he's trying to sell his property. But for the last thirty days, Nami Lenachtin Lenach say we also don't collect. The Omar Lekach Kufei Katarach was using because we say maybe he did find a buyer, but the buyer is looking is looking to um, uh, finance the the purchase, taking up the thirty days to finance it. Okay, Loy also. Finally, at the end of the 30 days, nothing's happened. He hasn't brought the money. He hasn't brought the forgery witnesses. And it's clearly the guys on the delaying game. So, because we write a, a, an, an adrachta is, is a document that's used to seize the assets. Behind me, okay. And you can collect. However, there's some conditions. Behind me, the Amr Asino. This is true if the guy plays the delaying game. He says, I'm coming. I'm going to come, I'll give you the money, I agree, I owe you the money, I'll give it to you. However, if he denies it immediately, and he says, I'm not coming to court, then you write the adrachta, the, 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 uh, the seizing document, immediately. For closing the property immediately. This is true by a loan, but with a, an object that was given for, entrusted for watching, or borrowing, or renting, or paid watching for that matter. You write an adrachta immediately. And when we write an adrachta, adrachta again is the is the document of foreclosure. We only write an adrachta on property, not on movable items. Why not? Because we're consumed, we're concerned that the borrower. Might grab grab the movable items and take them, take them, and and consume them. The, I'm sorry, the lender, the lender, the lender is going to come, and and take 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 it away. Okay, so we're concerned here that the own the borrower the, the lender might take the items and consume them, and then let's say the let's say it turns out the document was forged. The lender is not going to have the money to repay for all the consumables. Uh, in other words, the guy, the guy, if we write in a drachta, a document of seizure on the firewood, so the guy will steal the firewood, he'll burn it through the winter, and then it turns out that the whole thing was the, the document was forged. So now what happens? Now what do you do? Sell him into slavery to pay for it? Not the well, the borrower, technically speaking, didn't didn't you know? He thought he was collecting a legitimate document. And um, he might not he might not have the money to repay it. Okay. However, you might imagine that let's say we do know that he has the money because he has property. So the Islay, the Islay, 
um, because but but if you but if the borrower does have property, so we're not concerned that he would consume and not repay because he has the property to repay from. So then we can write an adrachta to allow the borrower to seize movable items. Because even if we'll consume them and it turns out the document is forged, he has property to pay it. You got it? Is this after the 90 days? Or... Yeah, yeah. Or or uh, immediately if he doesn't listen. He says, I just listen. Thing. Not he doesn't listen. Uh, he says he's not listening. Right? If he doesn't listen, you have the 90 days. If he says he's not listening, then you then there's no waiting period. Immediately you you uh, you take it. Yeah. Okay, and the Gemara says Velohi, but it's not it's not the case. <laughs> we never write an Adrachta on movable items. Okay. We never we were um we will never write an, an a, a document to allow him to foreclose on movable items because of this concern that the move the movable items might be consumed. And even if it's property, the property might decrease in value. So we never allow you to collect movable items. To, to really to seize movable items in, in a legitimate core process. Okay. Um, when we write the adrachta, we notify we notify one second. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. We notify the borrower that we are allowing the lender to seize his assets. The hiding meal the mikrof. This is only true if the borrower lives close by, Avil Merchak, but if he lives at a distance, then Loy, we don't have to notify him. The Merchik Vega Krivim, let's say he lives at a distance, but but he has relatives that live nearby. Inami, Ikashai Rosa, the Azli Va Osu Va Osu Hasam, or there is um uh there is um what do they call this? Um there are roads and there is people traveling from these two cities. So they're yeah. far away. They're they're far away, but you can communicate a message. But also awesome. Machina le tracer yarchi shata. So then we give up to 12 months. Add the Osli for also Sharoso so that the caravan can get there and come back. Kihadra Ravina, Sholomar Acha Tracer Yarchi Shata. Ravina sent a message that he's going to collect from Ravacha. And he waited 12 months. Add the Osli for Isis Sharoso, Sharoso, Mibe Chazoi. Until the caravan came back from Be Chazoi. We were the, we were the, 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 other, the other guy, the, the, um, the borrower, defendant was located. Sigmar says, Veloi. It, that's not the case. The, the story doesn't prove anything. Hossam Inish Ali Mahava. The guy was a, a powerful person. This person whose name was Mar Acha. And it would have been impossible to take it away. Sorry, I'm sorry. I, I, I got confused here. Maracha was the lender, not the borrower. The Maracha was the powerful person. He was the lender. So basically, Ravina was concerned as follows. Let's say it turns out the this this powerful guy's document is a forgery. The defendant, which is the which is the borrower, is not going to have any recourse against him because the guy's a powerful person. So therefore, Ravina was extremely was deliberately slow walking. And making him wait a very long time until he wrote an adrachta, so that to make sure that it would be written the first time correctly, and that if there was any chance the document was forged, um, the the borrower should have a chance to defend himself before allowing the powerful lender to seize the seize the property. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. 
So basically, we, we give him a, a maximum of a day's notice. We'll send the messenger on Tuesday. We'll give him an opportunity to come on Wednesday. And the courts are open Mondays and Thursdays. The fifth day, the fifth day of the week is Thursday. So he can stand in court on Thursday. The messenger of the court is believed as if he were two witnesses. Meaning, the, 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 the messenger of the court goes to somebody's house and summons him for a case. And the guy, the guy says no. We believe the messenger of the court as if he were two witnesses. And we, we allow, we will excommunicate based on a single witness's um, uh, statement. The guy refused to come. Okay. Behind me, Shamta, this is only true for, for, uh, excommunicate, for, for uh, excommunicating him with words. But for writing a document, Avu Psicha, Le Psicha is a written excommunication. Okay, what happens is when a person is excommunicated in writing, we only remove the excommunication once he pays for the document. So he has to have he has to forgive whatever reason the, the document was written, and he also has to pay for the pay for the, the scribe to write the document. Because there is that payment that has to be given, therefore we don't trust the messenger until there unless there are two messengers. Okay, Amr Ravina. Ravina says, "Yavina and Zimna Apuma de Itza, the Apuma de Shivvi." One second. Okay, um, in in other words, we can send a summons to somebody to come to court through a. Uh, through a woman or through a neighbor. You know, it doesn't have to be a formal, you know, shtech doesn't have to necessarily be a man. Or, or somebody who doesn't know him. And this is only true, if he's not in town. But if he's in town, loy. So then, um, one second. We would not we would not excommunicate him based on what his based on the fact that we sent a messenger with his neighbor. Why? Because Amr Loy Amrle, it could be that the neighbors did not convey the message to him. The Amr uh one second. Okay, because because the, he presumed. Okay, one second. In other words, the, the, the neighbor might presume that the court will send its own emissary. Because if he's out of town, then the neighbor presumes that he is the only one who knows. The court is not going to chase after him. But if he's in town, they presume the court sent their own emissary. And therefore, they didn't tell him, they didn't bother telling him. Okay. Okay. Say, similarly, if it, if it's known that this guy walks past the gates, the gates of court, so then same story. They, then they presume Amri. They say to themselves, They 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 don't convey the message because they say presumably the court. Like why would somebody convey bad bad news if the court the court has to do it and the court would do it anyway? So therefore, we don't rely on the neighbors to pass on the message. One second. It is only true that we ex we, we 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 trust the neighbors or 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 a woman to hand over the message of, of the court summons if it was known that he was coming back that day. Uh, we're on one thirteen a, and we're about seven lines down. First one line is is lay. Layma, yeah. So, in other words, if if um if it's not known that he's coming back that day, then we presume ishtalui ishtale. They forgot about it. They forgot to pass on the message. They only remember if he came back the day that the court told him from a distance. As you see, he was in a different town. The court was not going to chase after him. He came back that day. The court told the neighbors or or, or a woman to let him know that he has a summons in court.
In that case, we trust them. We will excommunicate him based on that. But if he's coming back a couple of days later, then we then we do not rely that the message was given over. It could be they forgot about it. Amarova, Haiman, the cost of the cost of Allah Psycha, Al Delas. I'm sorry, Al Deloy Osiladino. A guy was excommunicated for not showing up in court. Ad Osiladino, Loy Makarinale. We don't rip up the rip up the document until he shows up in court. One second. <clears throat> okay, and similarly, Al Deloy Tsayas Ladino, for somebody who doesn't listen to the judgment. So Adit Science Lemik Harinale, we don't rip up rip up the, the excommunication until he actually file, un, until the, the court instructions are executed. So in other words, both if a guy is summoned to court and if a guy is, is command it, it, and doesn't come, or if a guy is told what the court given the court ruling and doesn't follow it, we excommunicate them and we don't undo it until he follows through with what was being demanded of him. The Gemara says, It's not true. The, with regard, the law, if a guy says, if if we, the court wrote a document to a guy because he was not complying with the court order, as soon as he agrees to comply, we rip up the document. Even before he actually complies. Why? Because it could take time. He might have to borrow money. It could take time, but we'll still rip up the excommunication if he says he will comply. Omar of Chizr. Chizr says, Kaivin's man, Shani v'chamishi v'shani. We set up, we set a, a Monday, a Thursday, and then a Monday. Uh, one second. Okay. Zimna v'zimna bas v'zimna. We give him a time, and then we can delay the appointments twice. Ula machar, but if he doesn't follow through on all three appointments, then kasvina, and you can start writing up an adrachta. An adrachta, a foreclosure, foreclosing document. The document that will allow him to seize, seize the assets. The bill of seizure. Rav Asi Ikla be Rav Kahana. Rav Asi went to went to visit Rav Kahana. Chazahi itza the Azmal Dina b'Panya. He saw this woman was summoned to court in the morning. Ubitzam for Kasev al Psicha. He wrote he excommunicated her in the evening. Amar Lei. So Rav Asi was surprised. He says Savar Lamar Lahad Amar of Chizda Kavins Man Shani Vchamishu Vshani. Don't you know the law of Rav Chizda that we give you three appointments, three days, Monday, Thursday, Monday. Amar Lei. So Rav. Uh, Rav Kahana responded, This is only true if a person is not around town. Since she's around and she can easily show up, presumably she didn't have a job or anything. So therefore, the fact that she doesn't come immediately shows contempt of court and immediately she's excommunicated. Yeah. Amr of Yehuda. It's, it's not, I wouldn't say necessarily it's true. It's just a, uh, it's a practical, um, it, it will, in other words, the law here does not reflect ma male or female. It's just that a male is used for an example of what ma men typically are typically do, and a woman's used for example of what women typically do. Yeah. So, it, it, you know, at least if, if you have a man that was stay at home or a woman that was traveling for work, then the law would be the same. It's just that usually, the, the, usually it's the opposite. Yeah. Omar of Yehuda, yeah, for sure in Talmudical times, even today, it's you know it's still largely like that. Although obviously today there's you know much more, much more, much more. It's certainly nothing as close to what as binary was as it was in Talmudical times. Omar of Yehuda, zimna, nisan, tishrei. Okay, so you don't you don't make appointments when the guy is going to be exceedingly busy. This would be during the harvest or during the uh, the, the the gathering in of the of the bundles. Mm -hmm. Not on erev Yom Tif, not on erev Shabbos, the day before Yom Tif or Shabbos. You can give him a summons in Nisan when he's busy cutting his field, but that he should show up in Eor once the field is already cut. And the same thing is true. You can send him a summons in Tishrei when he's very busy gathering the stuff in and, and with the holidays to come in Cheshvan. One second. Okay, however, However, on Erev Shabbos, we do not issue summons, even for him to show up on Tuesday. Why? My time of Bavit Shabbos Tari, he's too busy to even receive the summons. Amr of Nachman, Nachman says, Okay, very important. This is a, this is sort of a, a cruel strategy that some people do. 
and uh, Rav Nachman is eliminating this possibility. Basically, they have these days of study. You think like a you know, legal holiday when everyone comes to, to, to the study hall to study. Mm -hmm. Or they have a, a set of lectures before the holiday discussing the laws of the holiday. So you think it's a prime opportunity to, fi to find your, uh, your defendant, your litigant, and summon him to court, right? Because you know he's going to show up. The document says, no, you can't do it. Why? Because then nobody will show up. Because right, we want people to show up and study this study, and we're not interested in that that being becoming an opportunity for people to get summoned to court. Okay, I've also come with Nachman when when he went when uh, when the, the the people that were you know the the uh, the um the litigators came to Nachman and they wanted to summon the people during these study times. Do you think that we made this event just that you could issue all your summons today? No, we didn't make it for you, and you can't. The Gemara says, However, today, where there is a lot of uh, people that, um, a lot of tricksters, cheaters, so therefore we do allow that we do allow you to summon them to court if they're suspected of cheating excessively. Okay, back to the original mission. Okay, we don't all the laws of the court. Now you know how to execute your judgment. Back to the mission. A guy, uh, uh, the father steals something, inherits it to his, drops it to his kids for an inheritance. If it's a dover, they have to pay for it. What does that mean? It doesn't necessarily mean real estate. If a stolen item was something like a uh, an ox or a donkey that is that was known to belong to the, the original owner, they must return it, and they covet avim because of their the honor of their father. And this would be the case even if the animal, let's say, was wounded, and then and then got better. So it's a financial obligation; they, they're exempt from payment, but they're they're obligated to return the item because of their, the dignity of their father. So that people shouldn't look at them and see them using somebody else's ox and say, "Oh, their father is a thief." Rav Kahana may Rav. So Rav Kahana add Rav to maybe to expand the list. Maybe it's not just a. Um, an ox and a and a donkey that are clearly recognizably belonging to the original owner. Maybe it's more things as well. Mito mesevala, a a uh, bed to lean on. Shulchan vaeichalov, or uh, a a um a table to eat on. Ma, what's the story? Uh, are those included or not? In, in other words, so mm -hmm. so like the example I gave you in the past was the old lawnmower with the coat of arms, right? Because that's an outside thing. You use it outside of your house. Everyone knows you're using it. What happens if the item was used inside your house, but it's also prominent, like a dining room table, with with somebody else's coat of arms on it, right? Is that so? So he so he said to him, "Give to the to the to the wise, and they will become wiser." In other words, he he agreed with him. He said this was included, and these are also not these items are noticeable, and therefore they'd have to be returned. Okay, very interesting tomorrow for tomorrow. Learn about the uh, the government laws.